Hello there. In this video, I am going to discuss the most potent mineralocorticoid which is produced from the adrenal cortex and that is aldosterone. So let's discuss aldosterone under the following objectives. Let's first understand its regulation, then the actions and then the mechanism of action. Now coming to the regulation of aldosterone. Now regulation of aldosterone, even though aldosterone is also produced from the adrenal cortex, it is entirely independent of regulation of cortisol which is another hormone which is also produced from the adrenal cortex. We all know that cortisol which is a glucocorticoid is under the regulatory control of ACTH which is produced from the pituitary gland. But unlike cortisol, ACTH plays a very minimalistic role in the regulation of aldosterone. So the most potent regulator of aldosterone is the potassium ion concentration. Whenever the potassium ion concentration is increasing, that is whenever there is hyperkalemia, this increased potassium ion concentration is going to is going to directly stimulate the adrenal cortex and adrenal cortex is going to increase the secretion of aldosterone. So remember the most potent regulator of aldosterone is hyperkalemia. Second is hemorrhage, low extracellular fluid volume, low blood pressure and less sodium concentration. Remember hemorrhage, low ECF volume, low blood pressure and less sodium concentration all of them can also stimulate the adrenal cortex and increase the aldosterone secretion but these are not going to directly stimulate the adrenal cortex and increase the aldosterone secretion but these are going to stimulate one more system which is called as renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Now this renin angiotensin aldosterone system once it has got stimulated that is going to increase the secretion of angiotensin 2 and then this angiotensin 2 is going to act on the adrenal cortex which is in turn going to cause an increase in the secretion of aldosterone. So all these are indirectly going to act on the adrenal gland and increase the secretion of aldosterone. Now last but not the least is our ACTH which plays a minimalistic role in the secretion or in the regulation of aldosterone. So these are the factors which are important in regulation of aldosterone. Next let's understand the actions. Remember that action of aldosterone is predominantly on the nephron of the kidney and it is to be more specific it is acting on the collecting duct of the nephron. So what are its actions? These are its four predominant action. So when it acts on the kidney or nephron the collecting duct it is going to cause reabsorption of sodium along with that there is going to be reabsorption of water there is going to be excretion of potassium and there is also going to be excretion of H plus ions. Now the excretion of potassium is occurring because of the action of aldosterone on a cell which is called as the principal cell which is lining the collecting ducts. Now excretion of H plus is going to occur because of the action of aldosterone on cells which are called as intercalated cells which are also lining the collecting ducts. Now let's understand the mechanism of action. So this is a cell which I have drawn and this cell is nothing but the P cell or also called as the principal cell which lines the collecting ducts. Okay. Now if this is the P cell which is lining the collecting ducts, this membrane of the P cell is called as the apical membrane. Okay. And this membrane of the P cell is called as the basolateral membrane. Now if this is the apical membrane, this has to be the lumen of the collecting duct. Okay. And if this is the basolateral membrane, this is the interstitial space and adjacent to the interstitial space, we are having blood vessels. And this is the nucleus of the principal cell and inside the cell there is a receptor which is called as either aldosterone receptor or it is also called as the mineralocorticoid receptor. Now what is present in the blood vessels? In the blood vessels I am having aldosterone. So aldosterone is a hormone it is secreted into the blood. Now aldosterone is going to enter into the cell and it is going to bind with this receptor which is the 
aldosterone receptor now this hormone and receptor complex this complex is going to enter into the nucleus so this aldosterone and aldosterone receptor complex once it enters into the nucleus here it is going to stimulate the process of transcription and hence it is going to stimulate the production of mRNA. Now this mRNA is going to diffuse out of the nucleus and here it is going to increase the protein synthesis. So some proteins are produced. So these proteins are nothing but the transmembrane proteins. These are the transmembrane proteins which are produced. Okay. Now these transmembrane proteins are going to get incorporated into the apical membrane of the P cell. So this is a transmembrane protein and this transmembrane protein is called as ENAC. What does ENAC stands for? Epithelial sodium channel okay now what is there in the lumen in the lumen we are having the tubular fluid and the tubular fluid is having lot of sodium okay now what is the function of this enac the function of this enac is to absorb this sodium from the tubular fluid into the cell this is called as the reabsorption of the sodium so now what has occurred is that the sodium which was present in the tubular fluid has now entered into the p cell has now entered into the p-cell now also remember that the p-cell is having one more pump in its basolateral membrane and this pump is called as sodium potassium ATPase pump okay now one more important thing which occurs because of the binding of aldosterone to its receptor is that this is going to also stimulate okay the sodium potassium ATPase pump. Now what is the role of this sodium potassium ATPase pump is that whatever sodium has entered inside via the ENAC channels from the tubular fluid or from the lumen this sodium okay will be pumped out into the interstitial space and from the interstitial space it is going to enter into the circulation okay and as we all know how many sodium will be pumped out by the sodium potassium ATPase pump three sodium will be pumped out now in exchange of the three sodium what is going to happen two potassium ions will be pumped inside we all know that now these potassium ions which are pumped inside they are transported across the apical membrane with the help of one more transport protein which is called as ROMK what is the full form of this ROMK renal outer medullary potassium channels renal outer medullary potassium channels now what is happening now the potassium is entering into the lumen so this is called as the excretion of the potassium so now ultimately what the aldosterone has done aldosterone has successfully reabsorbed the sodium which was present in the tubular lumen in the tubular fluid and in exchange of sodium it has excreted the potassium out in a similar way aldosterone is also going to act on one more cell which is called as the intercalated cell there also it is going to cause reabsorption of sodium and in exchange of reabsorption of sodium there it is going to excrete out the H plus ions so whenever the aldosterone levels are going to increase the body is going to lose potassium the body is also going to lose H plus because these are excreted now in the urine so that might result in hypokalemia and that might also result in metabolic alkalosis and instead of that what is happening there is an increase in the sodium and along with sodium there is also reabsorption of almost equivalent quantity of reabsorption of water so what will this do this is going to increase the blood pressure this is going to increase the blood pressure so the most important thing here to remember here is that there is incorporation of these membrane proteins which are called as epithelial sodium channels and one more very important thing i am going to tell you which is an applied aspect which will help in your pharmacology is that these enac channels are inhibited by one drug which is called as 
amyloride which is used as a diuretic similarly these aldosterone receptors are also called as the mineralocorticoid receptors also can be blocked so that aldosterone is not going to come and attach there these drugs are called as aldosterone receptor blockers and this there is a one drug which is called as spironolactone which is a very potent aldosterone receptor blocker okay so what we have understood in this video is we have got to know the regulation and remember unlike cortisol the most important regulator is not ACTH but the most important regulator is potassium followed by all those things which stimulate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system and at last we can also mention ACTH and say that it has got the minimalistic role and we know the actions four important actions which are actions on the collecting ducts one is reabsorption of sodium along with that there is reabsorption of water excretion of potassium and excretion of H plus ions how on which cells it is acting it is acting on two cells one is called as the principal cell another one is called as the intercalated cell and at last we have discussed the mechanism of action wherein the aldosterone enters inside the cell it binds to the cytoplasmic receptor increases the protein production and these proteins are called as epithelial sodium channels which get incorporated in the apical membrane and hence they cause reabsorption of the sodium and along with that there is also reabsorption of water in exchange of that there is excretion of potassium and H plus ions. I hope this video is helpful for you in understanding the aldosterone if that's the case hit the like button share this video and do subscribe to my channel. Thank you.